Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the AP Physics Calculus Mechanics 2017 AP exam, and this is problem number three. This finishes out the 2017 exam, and oftentimes on every single exam, there's going to be a rotational problem, and here's where it rears its ugly head, and we have our... Um, you can see the rotational inertia of the cylinder is one half mr squared, and so I have a cylinder rolling down. So there's not only gravitational and potential energy that we have to come in contact with, but there is also a, a value of our our rotational energy. And so we're going to have some uh, maybe rotational kinematics, some rotational energy in here. We have to keep that in mind. And so here you can see the first part is asking what's the total kinetic energy as it, the ball reaches the table here. Okay, and so this is a gravitational potential energy to a total kinetic energy and they are kind of preparing you for the rest of this problem. So the gravitational potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height, and so the mass is 0 0.50 kgs. Our gravity is, of course, 10 meters per second squared, and what is our height right here? What's this height is going to be? We've got to use a little bit of trigonometry here. It's 1.0 meters sine of 30 degrees because it is opposite of that 30 degrees, and that will leave me with 2.5 joules of energy, 2.5 joules of energy. So that gravitational potential energy is equal to the total kinetic energy as it hits the table. So right here, as this ball is right here at this table, it will have a total kinetic energy of 2.5 joules. Now this was worth two points, one point for setting up your problem, one point for your 2.5 joules. Now if you use 9.8 meters per second squared, you're going to get little different numbers. It's okay. It's okay. You can use either one. Then we come to B, and B is asking for the angular velocity. And so what we have to do is we have to think of what is the total kinetic energy, and that total kinetic energy is equal to the translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy, isn't it? So we have 2.5 joules of total energy, and that's going to be split up between translational and kinetic. So what is my translational? Is 1 half mv squared. What's my rotational? Is 1 half i omega squared. And something we have to know is velocity equals radius times omega. So when we substitute, we have 1 half mass times the velocity squared times r squared times omega squared. And what do we have here? We have one half. We know the rotational inertia was, if you remember back at the beginning of the problem, one half of mr squared times omega squared. And so I can add all of this up. I can plug in as all of my numbers. I plug that in like this, 0.0025 omega squared plus 0.00125 omega squared, which ended up being 0.00375 omega squared, and all of that e equaled my total kinetic energy of 2.5 joules, which means I just solve algebraically for omega, and I got 25.8 radians per second, and that is your omega, your rotational angular velocity is 25.8 uh, radians per second. So one point for kind of setting up this value here, one point for using utilizing this uh, translational velocity equals r times omega, and one point for my answer, three points for problem b. Now let's come to problem c. So problem c, what do we have? We, we want to calculate the the ratio of the rotational kinetic energy to the total kinetic energy of my system. So I have rotational kinetic energy over my total of my uh, system here. And so what do I have for rotational? I have 1 half i omega squared on the bottom for the total kinetic energy, and we're seeing when it reaches the floor here. So what do we have? We have our 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i omega squared uh, plus this last little energy right here of mgh. And so I know this whole part right here equals 2.5 joules. And what do we have for our mgh? We know our h is 0.75 meters. I know when I do 1 half i omega squared, I'm going to end up getting 0.83 205 joules out of a total energy of 6.25 joules, 
and that gives me 0.133 or 13.3 percent. And so that was worth two points, two points. One point for the setting up of your ratio and one point for finding your ratio at the end right there. Now we come to D, the last kind of part of this this subset of problem is we want to know what's the what's the horizontal distance what's the range with which this falls and so we do these problems all the same way we know height equals one half gt squared or time equals two h over g and so the time ends up being 0.387 seconds to hit the ground and what do we know is that distance equals its velocity what we will call its translational vol velocity times your time okay which was 0.387 seconds what's the translational velocity that's its radius times its omega times time and so its radius is 0 0.10 its omega is 25.8 radians per second and what is the time is 0.387 seconds and that gives me exactly one meter one meter of the range so that's worth two points one point for finding your time one point for finding your range and then we go on to kind of a, a experimental part of it. This experimental part of it says a sphere of the same mass, same radius, is rolled down the same inclined plane, except the rotational inertia is now 2 fifths mr squared. It is 0.4 mr squared. Its rotational inertia, its rotational inertia is less than that other inertia. The other inertia was 1 half, 0.5 mr squared. And so what we want to do is answer these three questions. The first one says, is the total kinetic energy of the sphere at the moment it reaches the floor greater than, less than, or equal to the total kinetic energy? It is equal to. Why is it equal to? Well, at the top, it had gravitational potential energy. That gravitational potential energy is not going to change. Okay, the energy will be conserved, which means the total kinetic energy at the ground is going to be the exact same as that 2.5 joules. It might be distributed differently, but it's still going to be 2.5 joules. And so that's going to be worth two points for that problem. I'll detail how the, uh, everything comes out at the end. Now they ask, is the rotational kinetic energy at the moment it reaches the floor greater than, less than, or equal to the rotational kinetic energy and so it will be less than and let's explain why it will be less than um, since there is less moment of inertia that means there will be less um, rotational kinetic energy rotational kinetic energy and there will be more so that there will be more translational kinetic energy won't it so its linear speed will be faster but its rotational speed will not be faster will it because there's less moment of inertia so there's less rotational kinetic energy there's less rotational kinetic energy which means there is more of the translational kinetic energy and that's all because of the i and then the last one we want to know what about the horizontal distance the horizontal distance is going to be greater than why is it going to be greater than well we saw that there's going to be a greater linear speed as it comes off the table so if there's a greater linear speed speed remember the time is going to be the same so we know that there will be a greater dis displacement a distance it will go further okay and so each one of these is worth two points uh, one point for saying equal to one point for the explanation one point for saying less than one point for the explanation one point for greater than one point for the explanation and that my friends is the 2017 AP Physics C Mechanics exam, problem number three. Have a good day.